Hey Beer Geeks, welcome back to another episode of BrewTube. Today we have another grudge match. This is a uh, triple header. The tag team is going to be the Dry Stouts. So we have got one from Camden Brewery, we have got one from Brewdog, and we've got The Guinness. I did want to get the London Black from Ansbach and Hobday, and it appears that maybe they only do it from the keg. Um, I went along there to try and buy one. My mistake, it was the day that they were closed. I spent a lovely afternoon in Cloudwater. Let's get to it. I say the Guinness because that was the original dry stout. It was based on the porter that was very famous in England. And after the Industrial Revolution, the malting processes became more perfected, meaning that they could make these darker beers, but cheaper and so the Guinness was born by basically trying to replicate the porter recipe but using a different kind of grain bill. I don't really have three of the correct glasses so there won't be any nonic pints or the tulip pints, uh, the American pint shaker which maybe is not quite right for the dry stout but I do have some of the smaller glasses um, you may think that I'm going to be the only winner this time because I have three beers to finish, but no, I will not be finishing these beers. I'm going to be doing something rather unusual with these beers. So stick with me until the end. The honour goes to the uh, Guinness Draft Stout first. This can does have the widget in it. A lot of these beers do have the serving style of nitro. They use the nitro to serve the beer, um, which is going to give it the very, very small bubbles tight head and it's a good way basically of pushing beer around because the nitrogen won't actually get absorbed into the liquid like carbon dioxide will so it won't get over carbonated. Next up comes the Camden Stout. Um, also coming in a 440 can and again a sessionable respectable 4% ABV. This also has the uh, widget in it. And last, and some may not say least, the Brewdog Black Heart. Again in a 440 can and 4.1% ABV. Don't go away, I'm doing something different with the rest of these beers. As you saw, they all poured amazingly well, nice and thick and very sort of unctuous. Very dark beers, these are gonna be the coffee-ish type beers. And this one passed, this was the Guinness. It poured with probably sort of the clearest of the, uh, the head. Yeah, you got the uh, darker roast of the, uh, of the malt, which will give you that sort of coffee flavor and a little bit of um, uh, the, on the aroma as well. Yeah, the flavor, very nice, very clean, very creamy finishes. The bitterness takes a little bit longer to, um, uh, to hit, but I wouldn't say that it was actually overly bitter. On to the Camden Stout. Again, poured very, very dark, slightly darker head to it. Similar in aroma, maybe slightly stronger with the coffee aroma. very nice got the coffee-ishness that sort of um, the roasty malt flavor bitterness hits you slightly quicker but it doesn't get any bigger so it's just um, a very nice well-rounded and balanced beer onto the brew dog black heart now you might think that the head retention is actually better on the brew dog beer of course the other two I poured slightly earlier so therefore some of the the head has now gone from this but uh, I say that the coffiness is much stronger in this, and I also say maybe there's a bit of chocolate there. This has got the bigger, bolder, malty flavours. Um, there's the coffee-ish, maybe some like sort of bitter dark chocolate um, just there in the background. None of them obviously are overly sweet. Um, they're, yeah, just very, very nice, very good beers. They all start with the, uh, uh, the roasty coffee uh, maltiness, um, finishing a little bit bitter. 
Uh, a lot of the um, breweries are starting to do this, like so-called Guinness Killer. So uh, yes, you've also got um, the London Black from uh, Asbach and Pop Day, which uh, again, I uh, have had that uh, from uh, one of their taps. A very, very good beer as well. So um, if you do like your Guinness, there's other options out there for you. For me, I would say it's the Brewdog Black Heart that wins it this time. So uh, cheers all. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please hit the subscribe button. But having tasted the beers, I don't just have to drink the beers. Thanks for holding that. That's my uh, knife buddy. Chuck a load of diced steak into a uh, container, into a pot. Start adding all of your beers. Dark beer does work really well. Make sure the meat's completely covered with the liquid. Got some thyme here. And some bay leaves. Give it a bit of a stir, make sure that the uh, meat is actually completely covered with the liquid. We're going to leave that in the fridge at about 24 hours, certainly overnight, and uh, we'll come back, see what it's doing tomorrow. Cheers all. So the meat's marinated very well for like 24 hours. Transfer the liquid and then the meat into some oven proof dishes. Preheat the oven to 100 degrees. Once you've transferred the meat, make sure you've got enough liquid in both containers. Finally fit the two into the oven. I leave it to cook. Set it to 100. It'll be good probably about sort of 10 hours or so. There you have it people. So it's been 10 hours slow cooking uh, overnight. Um, added some, uh, some thickness, I did like a beef, uh, beef stock gravy to, to thicken the sauce. Strained the remaining sauce, took out all of the bay leaves. And it looks absolutely delicious. Very excited to be trying this beef stew that I made. Some people might think that I over seasoned a little bit with the, uh, the bay leaves. They were dry bay leaves. I did um, uh, put in a few extra and uh, You could smell it this morning, cooking. Mm. You could definitely taste it in there. The, um, the stout in the sauce obviously makes it very, very rich. Adding in a bit of the, um, the beef gravy as well makes it delicious. The beef is just deliciously tender. Maybe we could have cooked it slightly longer. I think I was cooking it, well, I cooked it at 100. Um, I'd cooked it for about nine and a half, ten hours. Not that the beef's tough, but um, I've had, um, it might actually be the cut as well, but uh, I've had the stews in the past, I've had the uh, the birth bourguignon, um, things like that, and the, the, the meat literally is just like sort of, um, you know, falling apart. It's just, uh, it, it's philandrous, but it's uh, just falling apart. So I got to thinking, what would be a nice accompaniment to this? Well, I've got a can of the uh, Chichu Brewing Dark Ale. This is a small island off the south coast of um, South Korea. Um, I've had their beers in the past. They're delicious. I thought, what a better um, glass to put it in than from the uh, Uljuru Brewing Company. So I've got their glass as well. I'm going to try them both together. So I'm now trying the uh, Chichu Gongmyong Ale. I hope I said that right. Get a big, um, big dry roasty note. A little bit chocolatey. Getting some uh, malty roasty uh, notes in the aroma for sure. Maybe slightly chocolatey as well. Very nice beer. Yeah, got your uh, <clears throat> roasty, coffee, chocolatey notes, nice sort of malty backbone, not too sweet, not too bitter. Uh, this is a 500ml can, at, uh, coming in at 4.3% ABV. This beer is going to be a delicious 
accompaniment to this stew. I give it. That was basically the uh, original dry porter. The bay, bay leaves, so bay leaves. That falls on the floor, five second rule. Okay, that's your lot, beer geeks. Hope you've enjoyed the video. See you again here soon. Cheers.